everybody, Alison Terry here. What's behind door number two? So today we're gonna to have um, a full demo on whatever's behind door number two. So we're gonna open it up. It is tempting um, to see what's in the others, but we won't, we won't. Oh, so you get a lovely organza bag. And, oh, look at this. Multicolored jadeite. What a birthday. How amazing is this strand? Oh my gosh, this is totally amazing. So you've got different shades of gray. You've got a bit of mutton fat in there. You've got some yellow or mustard tones, some orange tones and some beautiful black and green. Absolutely stunning strand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 on the strand was amazing. So I've, I've actually had a sneak go with this and I've made very, very um, classic Allison designs. Um, very, it's got, it's got um, we're going to take our wire work a little step further. This is, this is um, binding um, the two together, how to make connectors, um, how to make loops, and the earrings and the necklace are just, they work just so well together. So we're going to be making, we'll, we'll make the two pieces and depending on how, to, how time goes, I might give you some um, alternative ideas as well on different weaves and things. So I, I, I like my, you could do this randomly, but I like the way they've set these out. So I, I took um, a set of three beads um, for each side and then the two blacks in the middle, which left me um, a black and uh, three of the beads, uh, sorry, two of the other beads for each of the earrings. So it really lends itself, once I've done that, um, to, to a V fit, uh, shape. So I'm going to cut my strand, preferably not with your flush cutters, but use a, use a scissors. Um, take it off the temporary strand. There we go. I'm going to mosey that over there a little bit. Because knowing me, I'll knock it over. So this is a great design um i've i've been making this sort of design for ooh, probably about the last 15 plus years it's always sold well for me whenever i've done craft shows i'm just going to waggle it because that's there we go annoying me um it's always done well for me um it's a very easy to wear very easy to sell um piece of jewelry so i'm just going to lay these out so i balance them up a little bit now the col colors are natural incredible natural jadeite so that's your necklace design shape so then split the others so you've got a green and more of a, a mutton fat color um, and the two sort of yellowy oranges are a slight different tone um, but it won't matter because they're either side of your head and the natural so so that's our basic splitting of our gemstones you could decide to do completely random you could decide to say well i want you know four blacks uh, and and two greens and an orange on on there and put the others in the earrings have a play it really doesn't matter so what are we going to need apart from your gemstones we're going to need some one mil wire and because this design's not a massive um, user of wire shall we say you could do this in sterling you could do it in plate it doesn't it's still going to have the same but it's not going to cost you a fortune to do it in sterling sometimes if you do a more elaborate wire work piece the cost of the sterling silver starts becoming prohibitive um, and especially when you're starting so so doing something like this it's affordable in in sterling or you can do it um, in your plate and you want 0.4 wire now when i started these were my go-to wires. This is what I started with. I made everything out of this um, because that's what I could afford. So I made, I made do. As you get more involved, as I became able to buy other wires, I would buy um, things that were better suited for a job. So if I wanted a more flexible piece, I'd use 0.8 as my core wire instead of one mil, um, or I'd use 0.25 um, in, if I wanted a finer thing. So all this um, comes as you develop your wire work. So I kept it simple, I've kept it classy, um, and this is what we're gonna make. We'll also need, so apart from your wire, um, I've used one eye pin, which is that one there, because we go from that one to that one. So an eye pin is easier, 
and then I've used um, the head pins just to pop just to pop the beads on at the end so um, we'll go through those in a bit then I've used round nose pliers flat nose pliers um, wire cutters if you can get I would say if you as soon as you can get a pair of flush cutters get a pair of flush cutters they're a game changer they really are a game changer we all we all start with um, normal cutters with side cutters um, and they'll take you so far and then once you've used a set of flush cutters you won't turn back so if I would advise you if you if you're just starting or you haven't yet moved on to a flush cutter get a flush cutter if you can um, and then the other thing I've used these are optional you can use your round nose pliers but for ease of getting a consistent loop then something like um, a six step uh, bail maker um, or even one with two different sizes um, so have a look out for, for your bail um, setting pliers or your mandrels they're invaluable they keep it consistent and if it's consistent if it's supposed to be consistent and it's not consistent it will stick out like a sore thumb if it's all supposed to be random then that's fine but with a piece like this you want it all to be consistent so something like that is invaluable right so we're going to start off i'm going to move the earrings to one side and then i'll move the those up until we've made the setting we can move those there you go i've just moved them all out of the way up there okay so we want to create a v now you can create this v as as tight or as spaced as you can when i do things that need spacing i use the rule of thumb and i very often just put my thumbnail in there and that's my space and that works lovely for this as a gap you might have a narrower nail you can use you can use things like um the pliers will give you a consistent distance or if you've got a jig that's another option you could use you could use a jig so i'm going to cut off a piece now i always cut off too much so that's probably about 10 inches something like that um snip that off there and we want to bend it in the middle now we're going to create the loops first so if i if i po pop this over here i can point to it easier we're going to create the, the the bottom so this is created out of two pieces of wire bound together that gives it structure stability especially when you've got the loops because you can you know the loops will will give or can be pulled so we're creating the bottom one with with all these loops in one piece okay so we're going to we want to bend it in the middle but at the center we want a loop so we're going to start off and i'm using the smallest part of my um wrapped loops uh, my bail making pliers so pop your wire in i've straightened it out more or less i'm just going to pop it in i've got too much wire if it's not exactly in the middle it doesn't matter i mean that was pretty close for me but so you're going to pop that in now the other thing you can do is come on out you come so the other thing you can do is alter the angle that these will sit you can have a sharper v or a flatter v it varies it, it's up to you it, it doesn't matter it's personal choice so once you've got that first loop here comes my rule of thumb we're going to put our thumb in pop your nail in so your nail is snug against the last loop and your pliers then go snug to the um, nail you're then going to take that wire over the top keep going round move your pliers so that you take that all the way around so this then starts forming your straight line now be aware there are two ways i went over the top so it's come from behind wrapped out and then gone over the wire keep them consistent for each side so i'm going to pop my plier in again so we want uh three loops creating fetch it up to the side wrap the loop around and again you've gone straight over now look how consistent those loops are you get you're getting a perfect space perfect loop pop the last one in so this one's going to be the end we can cut it off we will trim the wire off but we're going to leave it there for now take it all the way round till you've got you're happy with that if you find your spacing is a little bit off 
you can do what I call walk the loop. So I'm going to do it on a, a spare piece here. We're going, to, we're going to trim this off. So I'm just going to create another loop and I want to show you what I mean by walk the loop. So if you've got a loop in and you want to move it, don't open your wire. What you do, whichever way you're going to go, so if we want to go that way, pop it in. I've got my finger underneath and I'm literally going to roll it along my finger. So what happens is it basically moves along. So it, it, this has opened a little bit, so I'll shut it back down. But as you push it that way, you're moving that, you're rolling it along. So instead of completely opening it and recreating it, I mean, you wouldn't move it that way. You only want to be moving them a small amount. But, but as, you're, as you're creating it, you're, you're rolling it along that wire. So you're keeping that one straight and stopping that one because normally you'd, you'd do that. Okay, so it stops it doing that. Right, we've finished this side. So I'm going to snip this here. Now, I want it to be so this wire actually tucks directly into the back of that one. So I'm just going to snick right up against the the uh, wire at the back. So if I if I hold that up that way for you, you can see it's actually really parallel to it. If I then squish that, it should sit just directly behind. Okay, if I'm going to then pop that in and just tighten it up Come on, out you come. So that that shouldn't, and if you do feel it, that should now sit directly. If I hold it that way, or actually better that way, can you see from the front? You can't see that wire from behind. It shouldn't show below, it shouldn't show above, it should sit perfectly. So that's the first part of our loop. We now need to turn it over and do the same. So because I've come over the top this way, I want to come over the top this way so I want to come underneath and over the top so I'm going to put my nail in I've turned it over so I'm now going back the same way so I can put my plier in exactly the same come over the top now watch where it's going so if I want it to come in front of that I've got to come this side can you see where that wires coming across so if I take this out you see how these are going, hang on, it's easier for you to see that way again. So you can see this is coming over the top and over the top. If like this one, it's got a little bit of a kink, well, we don't want that rounded bit. Take your, your, your flat nose pliers and just straighten that out a bit, just so you get that perfect line. So we're going to do the next one, pop our plier in. We've got two more to do, keeping it the same way. <laughs> Does it matter? Possibly not horrendously. I think it makes it a, a better overall piece if you keep them consistent. If you're going to go random, make sure they're all random. If you've got one the wrong way, it will stick out. Um, so it's not right or wrong to have them um, going the other way, varying, but it's just consistency. So pop that in now again we're going to trim this down so I want that to trim so that it'll just tuck underneath you have to be careful you don't want to cut the wire underneath it um, you can you can always trim more but you can't add back on so if in doubt go over the loop a little bit and if it sort of forces the loop wider all it'll do is, is force that to open when you squidge it then you can trim a little bit more off it but like that one's fractionally more, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we've now got our basic V. Um, put that out of the way. Now we want to get our next layer. So, so as it stands, because of these springs, which by the way, if you, make, um, if you want to make a, a pin, a, like a safety pin, if you keep going round there, there you go, if I fetch that one back that we did. These are great for brooches. So you've gone all the way round, and it is, it is relevant to what I'm doing. 
but that gives it because of that round you don't work harden that wire when you bend it so that gives that a good spring so it makes a really good brooch pin so keep that technique in your brain if you ever want to make a brooch um, so but but for this it makes these all fairly springy so it's not very stable so we want to put an inner level for two reasons um, because you also want to have um, you also want to have a little bit of decoration so this needs to be slightly longer than that we're then going to fold down the middle again and you want to be roughly at the same place at the same um, size that's slightly offset but I've got plenty now I don't know whether you noticed and I'm going to fetch another piece of wire in when I bend my wire I don't hold the pliers and bend see how curved that is yeah I always put the pliers in and I will push down can you see the difference you've got a really shallow curve you've got a really nice crisp bend so if you can put your pliers in it doesn't have to be a flat nose pliers it could be a chain nose pliers but you're pushing down against the pliers rather than pulling the wire around so just remember that as you're doing it so we're going to uh, put this in we want those just open it up slightly there we go we want those to be the same size I don't mind that it's too big for now I'm going to take off about a meter of my wire um, sometimes I work off the reel I very often work off the reel but about a meter worth is about what is for me is um, it's about that far it, in actual fact it's my nose to the tip of my finger um, but again if, if I've got too much it doesn't matter with this you can add in but again I don't like adding in um, if I can avoid it for something like this because it's such a clean line it's difficult to hide it perfectly so I'm going to fold my wire in half and I'm going to start at the middle and I'm going to when I say bind them all I'm going to do is bind these two together so get your other half out of the way just tuck it under the table um, now when you're binding them together you want to keep them so they're parallel you don't want them doing this and twisting so we're going to start and you can be quite you're not going between them so you can actually be quite tight and firm on your tension here it's a great way for for learning binding is a nice a nice way you use it a lot for for connecting two pieces of wire you use it a lot for little sections you'll use it when you're doing your cab setting um, so it's a nice technique to learn but it also teaches you about tension if you're too loose so if I kind of did it like that very loose and then push it up can you see it sort of goes all wonky top and bottom so what you want to do is undo, don't undo it too often because your wire will, will work harden so as you go around you're almost and I'm going to exaggerate it you're going over the previous loop as you go round and I've got a tension but it's not hard so I'm just keeping that firm so you know it's taut but it's not going to ring any bells or anything <clears throat> and keep just turning it round now if squidge that down if you keep your hand in the same place with a 0.4 or a 0.25 you will work hard on it again what do I mean by work harden if I get a spare piece of wire <clears throat> so when we talk about work hardening it's more prevalent in 0.25 than 0.4 um, but I, I mean I can break one mil wire with with my hands it's purely you're manipulating the the wire and if you keep flexing a piece of one mil in the same place over and over it will become brittle and it will snap so you you can you can do it yourself so if you're using wire in the same place and you keep turning it in the same place what happens is that place becomes brittle and it's not going to snap for me now <laughs> and it will snap trust me it will snap there you go it just took a bit longer than 0.25 so if you keep doing it in the same place it will actually snap so I, this is this is something I get um, asked a lot about from people who use 0.4 and 0.25 0.25 is even more um, fragile to, to snapping it's a very strong wire 0.25 is a brilliant wire 0.4 are brilliant wires but you have to treat them with respect okay so so don't go um, 
as you're wrapping it so as i wrap it my hand is automatically slipping a fraction down that you you don't want to be getting closer and closer you want to sort of keep your hand the same distance away and as you go through can you see how the wire is actually moving through as i wrap it because what's happening is i'm letting it slip so i'm letting each of those go through my hand and you can see this one getting shorter and moving around this end so that means the wire is traveling through my hand instead of um tightening and me me pressuring the same pressuring the same place so keep doing that now every now and then you'll see me also squidge up so if you leave it till the end and you've got a gap and you squidge up we saw before it will it will one will show above or below it won't fit properly so just keep squidging up and then the other thing we're going to do it's a technical term squidge by the way with a flat nose plier just to make sure these two are in parallel is you're just going to pop your pliers on and just give it an extra squidge that just that does now work hard on it but it means it's just going to sit there and it also gives you with a round we've got a round wire onto a round wire but because we've got the two wires we're creating a flat plane so this when you squidge it it gives it a bit more of a flat plane and that gives you a bit more of extra shine so by squidging it you're actually giving it a better shine than if you didn't so we're going to now now we're at this loop we can't get any more in there so we're going to step across to the other side so what happens is we get one line going across now if you swap this if i hold it up that way there you go if you swap this can you see can you see there going across if you swap that it um if you look at the front it's not going to it's not going to show particularly i know it's there so i know that's the back it's a way of saying which is the back and being consistent again so we're going to carry on wrapping all the way now as we as you get more um experienced with this you'll get faster at it if you haven't got a massive end which these aren't so you see i don't have to squish much because i'm keeping that tension good so i'm not letting it um loosen um, and spread out i'm keeping it nice and tight almost on top of each other till we get to to, to that loop again okay spread it down so and the other thing is i'm holding it i'm clamping it between my fingers if you suffer from dexterity issues or grip issues use um, a ring setting clamp um, and you can just hold that in the clamp and it gives you something bigger to, to, to hang on to um, so we're just going to do that last one because you don't want these twisting if you find they're starting to do that because you pull down on that second one so the instinct is as you go down that wire is being pulled if you start seeing it do that just get your pliers and, and flick them that way again. Just gives it that consistency. You get to hold it and then we can do that loop. So you can see, you can get quite quick um, and I'm a bit out of practice, so you can get a lot quicker than this. So we get to the end. We're gonna squidge that down again and go through. Now, I'm gonna do the other side before I come back to that. So I'm turning around. So at this point, we've got that cross at the back. We want to keep that. So, however, our wire is going to be working in the other way. So the, the, the center is always the um, trickiest bit. Now I've gone a bit wide there because you can't hold it properly. So I like to hold it right at that point so that I've got control of all those wires. Um, as your journey with wire work will continue, what you find is you start having longer and longer pieces of wires. So what happens is you learn to track your finger up. So as, you're, as I'm wrapping that one, I'm holding right at the end. When I get to here, now don't forget, this is our back. So we're going to go across this side and then we're going to carry on. Now, and if, in this case you can still see that a little bit get your flat nose pliers out and you're not doing it from the top you're using the flat side so you're holding them horizontal and just squidge that up so that you've got that nice open the same as the other side so we're just going to do quickly these two sides and you can see you can get 
quite a head of steam on but don't let it get too fast or too furious because the further you away you get the more flexibility in this wire you get so again have i got enough room to do that squidge that one down there there we go you'll feel it snick into this gap between the loop and the wire then you can take it across and start your last section and we're going to quickly whoops that's the other thing that can happen what i did there was i went too far over in my cross and i went over back on my wire so just you have to keep your eye on it it's not something i'd recommend doing um with my eyes closed but it doesn't mean you can't sort of look up um watch the telly and look down but do keep an eye on it because the quicker you get the more untidier you'll get and you can spoil a whole piece see i i got a bit fast there um there we go so we're going to squidge down all these sections get them nice and tight it also doesn't hurt to squidge on top now of the loops because that also flattens those a little bit because um when they come off if you if you look that side they're sort of angled because you've crossed over so they've got to be angled so you're tightening those up make sure both sides are squidged everything's in its same same plane and then you get this nice um finish with your wire really so we've now got our two ends to get rid of so we're going to pull it almost like um a wedge you know in a door wedge you put the wedge in and then you pull the door back on it and it stops because it's trapped between the, the the floor and the door so basically that's the same thing you're doing so gently don't do it too hard because you'll snap the wire and run up there with your pliers i speak from experience so push it as fa far as you can into that gap then take if you've got your flush cutters then you can do it flat if you've got side cutters really angle them down because you want basically to get rid of any bit of that wire if there's anything still sticking in there squidge it flat so that there's nothing sharp so always make sure you're not leaving any sharp bits of wire about so this side we're going to come up and through again pull it tight and snip right so obviously we've got to get rid of these wires now depends what you want to do you can do all sorts you can make fancy ends to them you could um, swirl back in the example we've got here i've just literally done a simple loop back so again i'm going to go to my so if you can see here we've got the loop at the top um, and that's just going to add a chain to it okay so we've got the loop underneath and then we've got that loop at the top so we're just going to pop our pliers back in now i don't want to do it directly at the end because i find if they're one on top of another it looks a bit odd so i'm going to put my pliers so they're up against that last loop and then fetch it round and again you want to take it beyond the point where they cross okay now i think that's a little bit too far away so I'm going to roll it down, but I don't need to worry about that other end. So I'm just going to roll it like that. So it's rolled in. It's still staggered a little bit, but it's rolled in now. So now we can go in and snip that extra end off. There we go. And we should be able to tuck that away. And now you've got no end showing. So we'll do that again this side. Again, we're going to pop that in, roll it round and roll it roll it down till we get to there oops sorry trim that off now that one is still over a little bit i'm going to trim a little bit more off just be careful when you're doing that because you can then trim too much okay so this is now a bit open pop your pliers in and just close that down okay so there's our main part of our necklace it's a nice project it's the sort of project you can do if you've got an hour before you've got to go out and you're like oh, i need a new piece of jewelry or such and such is coming around you can quickly make this okay so 
I've got my stripe there, so I know that's the back. I'm going to turn it over. Does it matter? Probably not. OK, so we're going to add these on. So we want our eye pin from the bottom. You can make that you could just you could just use wire for these if you wanted to. Um, what's the difference? For me to just use a simple loop, which is what this is rather than a wrapped loop, I would want, if I was doing it out of um, jeweler's wire, the wire we use um, to wire wrap and weave, I wouldn't do that with anything less than a 0.8. So that's a bit, it's going to be a bit heavier and restrict what you're doing and also won't match the head pins. With, with, the, eye, with the findings you get, eye pins and, and, and um, head pins, they're a harder metal. So what does that mean? We talked before about work hardening a piece um, by um, twisting it, bending it, whatever you're going to do, work hardens it, squish, squishing it, hammering it, all that work hardens it. Um, so this is harder steel. You'll see that by that flicks. OK, if I get a 0.4, it doesn't flick. You know, it, it, it bends. This won't bend so easy. It bounces back. So that's a harder grade of metal it retains its shape so if you wanted if you had a piece of um like i say 0.8 i'd do it without if i had some 0.6 i know this is one mil there is a way that you can you can harden it so make a loop only because it's going to be easier to hold it so make your loop put put your wire in make your p-shape we all do these slightly differently pop your pliers in and turn it back so you've got your you've got your eye pin you've got your loop sorted okay so once you've got your loop if you hold on tight to that and I'm just gonna get an extra pair of flat nose pliers or chain nose pliers right let's swap those over okay so you want to grip that quite firmly if you hold the wire pull and twist let's move that out of the way so this will be a lot harder so if you hold pull oops as you pull give it a twist a quarter turn can you see how much that's harder straight away already so if you do that a couple of times that will completely stop slipping on that will completely harden your, your material. So when you have to bend it now, that becomes harder, but likewise, it's not going to unbend as easy. So, so you, can, you can use it, you can use 0.6 if you work hard on it. Um, if you've got findings yourself, then it's time that you're not spent making them. So, and also, I mean, I know this is one mil, um, but it gives it finer. So it, you can use a finer, a finer, um, finding because it's already hardened for you um, would I recommend using memory wire to do it no um, because memory wire is much harder again it's, it's one of the hardest wires you can get it's called memory wire because it always remembers where it was and to try and persuade it to be another shape is quite difficult so um, stick to your findings or work hardening your own so we're going to pop one of these gemstones on to do an extra loop I usually bend it back because you want that kick. Pop my round nose pliers in. You can use a mandrel if you want. You can get a tool that, that will, uh, it's called a looping tool. They will create standard loops for you. Um, if you're using your round nose pliers, bear in mind they're tapered. You want to be able to do it at the same point. So either put an indelible pen don't think there's any left on this um, or pop it in your plier see where it is so I know I want to go about that far up my plier to make my loop and then they should match so again pop it in and then we're going to work it round so you should have roughly the same size um, holes on either side so that doesn't help with the black gemstone does it against my black okay so then we need to trim that and again you want to trim it so that it will sit like the other side when you close it and open it 
it will sit in the same place so we've got our first gemstone we're going to do the others so the same goes for these now why do we need to do a loop not a wrap loop a wrap loop is secu more secure but these are closed loops you could put a jump ring through but if you do a lap wrapped loop that's also a closed loop and you won't be able to attach them to there could you attach them while you were binding it absolutely yes so you could put a wrap a wrapped loop on try saying that fast several times put a wrapped loop on as you attach it to there and then carry on binding but it means it's stuck you've either got to cut it off or undo that so in in um for means of of, of economy shall we say for being more more uh, economic um i'm just going to do a, a simple loop which again these should be strong enough to hold so i've done exactly the same thing wrap it round if you've gone too far over you can always kick it back a bit more doesn't matter if you've done more than one loop pop those through if you can't get your pliers in and i'm just going to pop this one on then i'll show you with the next next one there's a little trick you can do so there's my two black gemstones they're going to go in the middle let me turn this around i'll come back to the to the other wrap loop now front and back when you've got a loop you don't generally see the join from you don't want to see it from the front so because we know we've got a front and back to this piece we're always going to have it so that that join is at the back of the piece piece it can be at the back of the piece as well if you want so we're going to tuck that in so that from the front you should see just the one line of that gemstone rather than seeing so again rather rather than seeing where the join is so i'm going to pop that down and i'm going to whiz you through the head pin so we want one two three four five six that's an eye pin one two three four five yay so what i do when, I, when i'm doing multiples of the same thing i kind of get into almost a conveyor belt so i'll pop all of them on the head pins um, especially if you're doing something like a bubble style necklace um, where you've got lots and lots of loops um, it's a repetitive thing it's something you can do very easily without concentrating while watching tv um, pop those through there we go and then i'll go through so why do i do this because for each one i'd pop it through do that pick up my pliers pick put my pliers down pick up my cutters so if you've got to do that for six different things and this is only for six you're putting picking up and down two different tools six times whereas if you do it like this you're just bending them all then when you've bent them all you're just going to put a loop on them all so you're, you're actually faster and more economical with your with your time than if you did them set, um, individually and it also means you're more likely to get the same place so I'm going to pop that in and roll it down, pop that one in, roll it down, pop that one in and roll it down. Like I say, I've done these, I've done these so they're a consistent colour. You can, with this, you can add, you can add extra gemstones. Um, I've got some lovely clear quartz faceted. I might have popped a, a faceted one so you can either do them so that they're articulated like this you can you can ombre them you can ombre i've done that very many times so you start with one color at the top and, and graduate down but also with the size so i'd start with one there two there three there four there three two one so you get a deeper v also from your gemstones so this this very basic design um gives you so many differences that you can use it, it you know it really is versatile if you just do if you just do those three have those three loops and then take chain or a wire up you've got a pair of earrings you've got a pair of chandelier earrings straight away so you can do this and create many many different pieces you can also have it put a bit of chain widen it out a bit and you've got um a bracelet a v-style or um, a wishbone they used to call it in my day 
So I'm going to trim all these off. Come on. So I was going to show you, wasn't I? This isn't quite in the right place. I can see that. I'm going to roll it a bit further. But I'm not going to be able to get my pliers in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tilt this up. So I'm actually separating it. I don't know whether you can see that. I'm separating it at the base. It's, it's separated away. Can you, see, can you see the V? Okay, let me pull him out of the way. So that means I've got more room here to get my pliers in. It doesn't happen with everyone, um, but every now and then it'll be so tight that you struggle to get it in. You can also kind of hook it out with your um, cutters. So we're just going to go in, pull those out. These are a fine tip. Um, usually when you start, your cup cutters have um, much wider um, blades on them. So it's harder to get into those places. So now we've got all those cut, we can decide. So I'm an ombre girl. We're going to have we're going to have a matching sort of graduated ombre going down. And it's just a case. Again, I tend to do it. Um, batch style so I'm going to make sure these are all open enough for me to put them on and then I'll close them as I go along so open them all it's a bit like doing chain mail open all your loops first there we go I tend to start from the middle and work my way out um, because it's easier if you start working there it, it starts getting a bit full in the middle so remembering which is the back and which is the front. Let's pop that down. You can see where your loop is. And we're just going to turn that in. Pick up the next one. At some point, you do have to pick up and put down your, your pliers. But the less times you have to do that, the more time you save. Pick up the next one. There we go. And then we're going to pop these on the other side. I this this like I say is is done with so many different things and so many I've made so many of these and so so many of these it's such a popular design. Um in, in all its variations, whether you're having, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in our seven loops in our main piece. But there, there you go, you're finished. So all you've got to do now is open that section and pop your chain on and your necklace is finished. So brilliant for doing, brilliant for selling, lovely to wear. It gives that nice V shape. Um, if you want, you can round it. If you, if you want it to go with a round neck top, Instead of doing a sharp V, then round them, curve them. The easiest way to do that is get um, a big bottle or a, a cup and curve it around that. It will give you that rounded, consistent shape. So that's the necklace bit done. I'm going to pop that to one side. So now we've got the earrings we're going to do. Um, so these are, I'm going to swap these over. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> so I wanted something that was a bit, it frames your face, so they're both coming down towards, towards your neckline. It's very flattering. Um, it's, it is quite contemporary. They're, they're very geometric. Is it, is it better with those behind? Yeah. Um, so they're just, they're just a nice, easy piece to make. Again, we've got exactly the same way of doing it down here. Um, and we've just got to create our triangular piece. What I would say when you're doing something like this, make them at the same time. So um, it, the, these mirror, you can make them the same way, but I never think, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna flip that round for you. <laughs> That's better. Um, I never think if I take one of these out, right, I'm going back to my photography um, days now, that doesn't work as well as a pair of earrings as the other way because 
when when I was when I was um, doing my photography, I had some excellent excellent advice um, for setting up exhibitions. Never have someone facing away at the ends because what happens is you'll travel along the line of photographs you'll get to the end one it will point you out of your photograph so if you've got more below and it's on to the next exhibition you've lost them so point in always the ends point you back in they fold you back in so it's like you're going out there and grabbing you and coming back in so you get to the end the face turns that way you automatically follow the way the face goes or the tree goes or whatever you've got you always fetch them back in and I find that with earrings if you've got them both going the same way people slide off your face they look at you and then they slide away you're not you're not framing yourself you're not making the most of it so so that's why I'll always try and have them both look in the same way so they're both looking in they're wider and tapering down well your head tapers down to your neck so it's a flattering thing it's following the shape of the v so again it's tying in the necklace so it all brings it in together so when you're designing these things think about that so if they were just flat with it along the bottom it wouldn't matter you could do it on either side if we'd have taken our little v there which we could have and made our earrings and made our earrings like that sorry yeah, so you, you've got your earrings like that, whether you go chain up to, a, up to a, um, an earring finding or whether you take the upper one and bend it in, doesn't matter. It will have the same effect. So you could make those. Again, it doesn't matter which way you go. But because I've effectively done that and said I'm going to use that as my finding, I want them to be either side. So we've completely mirrored what we've got on our necklace. So again, it all ties in. It fetches that draws your eye down your face and then it picks up the necklace and it carries on in the same way so it's all working towards um, enhancing you and that's what we wear jewellery for isn't it to, to, to showcase yourself as well as your gemstones so we want to make little triangles now I've, I've already done my little piece so we're only using the three I used my rule of thumb but then I wound the sides in a little bit because it was it was a little bit I, I thought that was a bit wide so I just wound them in a little bit to make it narrower so that's our start point we then want to make our um, our triangle bit now if you're going to do it if you make that and finish it at this point it will be nigh on impossible to do the other one identical because to try and get it the same when you've got um you know you've already looped that over you're 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 not sure where you can't put your pliers in because you've got the other piece attached it's going to be very difficult so what you're going to do is start off with this bit first now you can you can put i've i've started off with there and then i bent them in so start off with your plane bend them in again don't forget put your plier in push round with your hand so you've got this almost straight line well they are virtually straight and then that one's going at an angle so it gives you that nice um, asymmetric triangle to measure your second one you're going to put it on the inside now why do you put it on the inside two reasons you're going to put your plier in there to get that joint that turn at the same place if that's on the outside pliers work on a triangle so if you put those two wires in obviously the one nearest the inside of the triangle is fixed and this one is loose so if you did it that way round you've got your original fixed but the one you want to bend is loose so you're not going to be able to do it so put this on the inside it doesn't matter if you're left or right handed it goes to wherever you've got the plier so your plier sits with the inside one the the new one closest to you so pop it in then you're going to push it right up to that joint that that bend you can then just take your wire and bend it down to match that one okay now i've got i'm going to lift it up a bit because i've got my um mat in the way so you just want to push those down so that they're at the same angle it means you're going to get a consistent angle take your pliers out put them back in make sure those are the same so make sure those are the same put your pliers in now for this one 
you're not going to be able to get it further down so it's going to be slightly more awkward so we're going to pop that in go right to the end so I'm, I'm actually I'm right at that end now I know this the, the, the preformed one is going to fall away but I've got that one fixed I can push that down with my plier and get that bend in now we can put it back on that one and get that bend that consistent let me pop that down and get that consistent angle so that's how you get them both the same you'll then get that consistent angle you can then work out where you're going to bend it so what sort of what sort of angle do you want to get that loop in I've got a nice fine pair of pliers if you can get yourself a pair of the beadsmith pliers have a look on our website um, we may or may not have some in stock they have the most fine ends to the loops so you can get really small loop um, if not it, it's fine you'll just get a little bit of a bigger loop now I know with these pliers a loop is about half a centimeter so I know if I put a bend there then get my matching bend so I want to them to come that way there we go so we've got our bends that are going to be in the same place don't worry that they're 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 actually pointing in slightly different directions at the moment that's fine we're then going to get our bend to match don't forget your mirroring okay so pop it on get sure those bottom sides are the same pop it in there and you're going to put that bend okay so we've now got those two bends that slipped see happens to the best of us pop that in make sure it's in the right place let's hold that a bit firmer Alison and bend there you go so we've now got those two bending in the same place again I'm not so much worried about that I can pop my pliers in and straighten that out and again with the other side you can if you want measure this so you could get you could get out your tape measure and go oh, yes I put a bend at, 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 at however many centimeters or inches it is put my bend there it's very difficult to get them exact because that corner has got to sit exactly in the same place on your tape measure and then you've got to get your plier in exactly the same place it's it's a lot harder to do than you think it doesn't matter if it's yeah it, it that's a good point um should jewelry be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect i like my jewelry to be neat if these are slightly different absolutely my mother has a saying probably other people have heard it a man on a galloping horse is not going to notice he's not if someone's looking at you that closely and can see these are a fraction of different a fraction of a, a centimeter out they're probably a little bit close to you they'd better be really 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 good friends because otherwise they're here if they're if they're you know the other side of the of the dinner table having dinner or even standing they're not that close into your personal space they're a good two or three feet they're not going to notice they're really not going to notice um so don't don't get too over stuck on it um but um it's just a way to doing it so we've got to there so i want to trim these but i want them to be facing the same direction first so i'm just going to turn that a bit in by twisting it you know how we twisted the head pin so that's effectively what you're doing you're just twisting it and it's twisting along this long line is it work hardening it yes fractionally does that matter no because we want that we don't we're not going to un unbend it so we're just going to trim to about half a centimeter okay then i'm going to turn around if you want to then trim the other one and you can match that it's exactly um but again I know roughly that that's about the right size and then I'm just going to turn those back so that you get a consistent loop just rolling it around my round those pliers to get that consistent loop why don't I do them both at the same time because my round nose pliers are tapered so if I did one would have a bigger loop than the other and um, you can do it with your bailing pliers you will get a bigger loop because they don't go as fine as these pliers but it doesn't matter so now we've got our place you'll invariably find that 
they're crossing or they don't sit they might sit a bit wide or they're in front of each other so this is where we we sort of do a bit of manipulation we're going to cross them ahead of ourselves you know I, I said about memory wire all wire has a memory all wire wants to stay where you where you um where it where it was it doesn't like going there so you have to persuade it so what you do is you take it beyond the point and then you fetch it back so that then it then it thinks oh okay well i've come back but you haven't come back to exactly the same place but then you get them so that they're sitting next to each other and you can pop your head pin in your your uh, jump ring in and, or your yes because this way you you have a jump ring and then you're going to put your shepherd hook in um so that's how you get them to do to do that bit when now you'll notice i've done all this before i've attached that bit why have i done that because when you're wrapping if you open that slightly we're going to make sure that's flat and i grab a bit more point four hang on you see you're nearly done and we've nearly made a complete set of jewelry you know how to do the the um the necklace bit we've nearly finished the earrings so pop your earring then i've not got anywhere near as long but to do that is a lot easier than to feed it through if you're feeding it through you're constantly running it through your fingers and you're having to feed it through and pull it there and your fingers are going up and down the wire which is work hardening it so there are times when you can't avoid it but if you can avoid doing it if you can keep a gap then always keep a gap squidge it up um, and then just again go past forward and backwards and then that will get you back into that perfect place for your um for your jump ring to go through so this is exactly the same as we did before um, we're just doing the binding for it then we're going to add our gemstones along the bottom match the colors and then you've got your earrings matching that will go the other way you see what happens you can play with the designs and do them all sorts of freaky ways um, but that's how you're going to do your earrings exactly the same way you finished off your necklace and then you've got a complete suite of jewelry which will look amazing and you will really really look like you're, you're you've gone to town when you're going to town so um we've got binding with your 0.4 so you've got your one mil wire as your core wire that gives it the strength you've got binding with your 0.4 you can do this same design with 0.8 and 0.25 if you want if you haven't got either of the others do your binding that's the main part you've done your creating your loops getting consistent loops getting consistent spacing um do this you can practice this you can keep these straight and have um, a bangle round your art around your wrist which makes an amaz amazing extra thing um, just get two pieces of wire and, and practice binding and it's brilliant if you want any of the the um materials i've used today you've got your your piece from the jewelry maker calendar for the gemstones if you want the wire most of the tools are available on www.jewelrymaker.com send your makes into the wall of uh, fame and also post them on share your makes so i can see what you make out of these lovely gemstones and most of all enjoy the rest of this amazing 13 day birthday week enjoy <laughs>